The next item of business is consideration of business motion 10728 in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick on behalf of the Parliamentary Bureau, setting out a business programme which includes changes to the business programme for today. I would ask any member who wishes to speak against the motion to press the request to speak button now, and I call on Joe Fitzpatrick to move motion number 10728. Moved. Many thanks. No member is asked to speak against the motion, therefore I will now put the question to the Chamber. And the question is that motion number 10728, in the name of Joe Fitzpatrick, be agreed to. Are we all agreed? Yes. We are. The motion is therefore agreed to. The next item of business is topical questions. Question one, Sandra White. Thank you very much, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what action it has taken in the recent uh, situation in Gaza. Minister Hamza Yusuf. Uh, the Scottish Government condemns in the strongest possible terms the escalating, uh, the escalating cycle of violence, be that rocket attacks or airstrikes in Gaza and Israel, and its disproportionate impact, in particular on civilians in Gaza, who the UN estimates make up some 75 per cent of the Palestinian dead. We are appalled that the death toll now stands at over 1,800, including nearly 400 children. We are pleased to note that a ceasefire announced last night uh, and the withdrawal of Israeli troops reported this morning uh, and a call for uh, meaningful peace talks that we hope lead to a lasting ceasefire start as soon as possible. It was announced on the 30th of July that the Scottish Government is providing £500,000 in humanitarian aid in addition to the UK contribution to help people affected by the crisis in Gaza. The Scottish Government has also offered to treat uh, casualties requiring specialist care as a result of the conflict uh, here in Scottish hospitals. We call for an immediate lifting of the blockade in Gaza, which we believe to be tantamount to collective punishment. Since the conflict started, the Scottish Government has written to the Prime Minister on the 25th of July, the Home Secretary on the 18th of July, and the Foreign Secretary on the 9th of July, to ask the UK to take concrete action to make meaningful progress to a lasting peace and that it plays its part in international refugee settlement programmes, in which the Scottish Government is happy to play its part. The Scottish Government has demonstrated that we cannot and we should not and must not stand idly by while innocent civilians are being killed. I am today on behalf of the Scottish Government calling for an immediate arms embargo to Israel. The UN has said that there is a strong possibility that international law has been violated and the UN Secretary General has described the recent shelling of a school in Rafa uh, as a criminal act. It is imperative that we decipher whether or not UK arms have been used in any violation of international law. Until that has been confirmed, uh, the UK must implement a complete arms embargo to Israel. Sandra White. I, I thank the Minister for that very comprehensive reply and uh, applaud the Scottish Government what it has been doing, commend them, and particular in the recent announcement that you made. Uh, the Minister mentioned in his opening remarks regarding the aid which has been sent to Gaza, in particular the medical aid in bringing Palestinian people here for medical treatment and have written to the Westminster Government. Can I ask the Minister if we have any update on that and if the Westminster Government is working with the Scottish Government to aid the people from Gaza to come here to get medical treatment? Minister. I thank the member uh, for the question. Uh, we have uh, yesterday actually uh, spoke to the director of uh, MAP Medical Aid for Palestinians, which I know the member is aware of, an organisation working in Gaza. We spoke to their director in Gaza, uh, who are putting together a list of uh, those who are a priority uh, in need of specialist care. So that discussion is going on with the NGO on the ground. Uh, the member will appreciate that there is a number of governments that we have to consult with. Of course, the Israeli government, uh, the Egyptian government in terms of uh, the Rafa crossing, of course, the Palestinian Legislative Authority and, indeed, the UK government who will, uh, who will be uh, issuing the visas uh, should we agree uh, to offer them specialist care. I have to say the UK government, uh, in previous cases where we have uh, wanted to bring people here for specialist care, have not impeded that and have helped in that regard. And I'm sure, uh, because of the priority and the immediacy of the, the need of this case, I'm sure they would also be willing to assist in this matter. Ms White. Uh, thank, thank you, Minister. And I would hope that we keep us updated on what is going on. It's imperative that we get the injured people uh, help. Uh, Minister, you mentioned 1,800 Palestinians have been killed and over 9,000 injured, the vast majority of them children, in the horrendous pictures that we saw on the television. 
You have also reiterated Ban Ki-moon in regards to the international law and those are responsible should be held to account. The Israelis are responsible in this particular instance of 1,800 people being killed. And I can ask the Minister if he does agree with Ban Ki-moon and many others that those responsible should be held to account and perhaps be sent before the International Criminal Court. Minister. Again, I thank the member for the question. Uh, we have said, uh, be it from the First Minister or myself directly on behalf of the Scottish Government, that we call for an immediate UN investigation into civilian deaths, all civilian deaths. And those that have violated international law, they must feel the full force of international law and be brought to justice. Uh, but that must be on all sides. And uh, we have condemned the actions of the Israeli government in Gaza as heavily disproportionate. Uh, yes, Israel has a right to safety and security. Uh, nobody would tolerate, of course, rockets being fired indiscriminately. And let's not beat around the bush. They are designed and they're fired indiscriminately to kill. Uh, but you cannot ignore the fact that, as the member says, 1,800 uh, civilian, 1800s have been killed, the majority of them civilians, children uh, playing on a beach or on feeding pigeons in the street or sleeping in a UN shelter. They are not terrorists. Uh, they have committed no crime. And therefore, of course, we back UN calls into an international investigation, and Scotland would support that. Trisha Ferguson. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I too welcome the ceasefire and sincerely hope that it holds on this occasion. I also welcome the humanitarian aid offered by the Scottish Government and by the UK Government, and I hope that that is able to get to the people who need it most. I think we must all surely abhor the loss of innocent lives in Israel and Palestine, but at the same time condemn utterly the target, targeting of UN schools and other facilities, particularly when we now know that the UN has guaranteed that there are no missiles, no weapons and no terrorists occupying those particular facilities, on, in one case, minutes before a rocket attack was launched by the Israeli forces. And we must also condemn the sheer scale of the loss of civilian lives in that small strip of land the Palestinians inhabit. So does the Minister agree that the only way this appalling tragedy will finally end is if the world community backs a secure Israel and a viable Palestinian state, the end of illegal settlements, the dismantling of the separation wall, and the restoration of water and fuel supplies to Gaza as soon as possible. Minister. I agree entirely with what the member has to say. And, uh, you know, the UN uh, have said that there's a strong possibility, the, the Human Rights Commissioner, Navi Pillay, has said that there's a strong possibility that international law has been violated. Uh, UN Secretary General Ban Ki moon has called the shelling of the UN school in Rafa a criminal act and a moral outrage. Uh, and therefore, it's imperative that a UN investigation of international partners and players. Uh, and I think, you know, we have to show leadership. And that was the tone of the First Minister's letter to the Prime Minister, uh, that uh, the UK must show urgency on this matter, international collaboration and leadership that has so far uh, been missing on that. But I agree with what she says about uh, the, the, the way to support peace. We believe in a two-state solution based on the 67 borders, the dismantling of the uh, separation wall, the... Uh, removal of illegal settlements and, of course, of course, the lifting of the inhumane and illegitimate blockade of Gaza, which, as the Prime Minister himself has said, and I quote, it is an open-air prison and, therefore, nobody, sh no innocent civilian should be living in that prison and that blockade should be lifted. But I welcome the cross-party support for those, uh, for those principles. Jamie McGregor. We, we Conservatives abhor the loss of life in Gaza. Does the minister not agree with me that the reports from the UN itself about terrorists in Gaza using UN schools as hideouts and weapon storages are deeply concerning? And does the minister further agree with me that it is essential that we continue working towards the two-state solution? But I hope that the minister shares my deepest concern about Hamas's explicit commitment to the destruction of Israel as stated in the founding charter. Minister. Uh, I thank the member uh, for his question. Uh, I, I reaffirm our uh, commitment to the two-state solution, but as the former Foreign Secretary, William Haig, uh, made it very clear in a statement earlier this year that the time for the two-state solution is starting to run out the more, the more settlements continue to expand into Palestinian land. Uh, and so we, of course, support the two-state solution, uh, but with that uh, immediacy 
that is needed in terms of actions. Uh, I, of course, agree in terms of uh, you know, Hamas's uh, objectives, and I agree with the member in terms of condemning them and, and every single statement that we've made, all six of them, be it from the First Minister or be it from myself, we've been at pains to stress that uh, rocket attacks uh, on Israel are indiscriminate. They are, they are designed to injure civilians. They're not targeted uh, at all, and no country should live with that. However, action, according to international law, must be proportionate. The Israeli government's actions have been disproportionate, and we should stand uh, united in condemnation of that. Mr. Crawford. Uh, thank you, President Officer. I think we have all watched, Minister, with disbelief night after night on the television, the atrocity after atrocity. And we have seen the killing of innocent children and civilians, uh, particularly, as said by Patricia Ferguson, in regard to UN schools and facilities. And the response has been that there should, the, the, the Israeli military will investigate. Now, there is a danger, I, su I suppose, when we get into ceasefire territory, which is great to hear. I hope it leads to lasting peace, that some of this will be forgotten. Can the Minister assure me that whatever happens, that the Scottish Government, together with the UK Government, hopefully, will continue to pressure the UN to make sure there is a proper international investigation takes place, because we cannot allow this to be forgotten? Minister. Yes, I agree with the member in terms of the horrific scenes that we have uh, all witnessed, and I think every member uh, across the chamber will have been horrified by what they have seen. Uh, the member is absolutely correct, and I give him an absolute assurance that the Scottish Government will not let this uh, matter go. If it uh, goes off our TV screens and uh, away from the sheets in our newspapers, then the Scottish Government will stand committed to ensuring uh, and calling for an immediate and independent UN investigation. Uh, that was the nature and the tone, again, of the First Minister's letter to the Prime Minister to assure and to show urgency and leadership on this question, that regardless of who has violated international law, that they are brought to justice, because at the heart of it, that is what is missing in this entire issue, has been both compassion and justice. So I, stand exa I, I agree with what the member says, and I give him a firm commitment that the Scottish Government uh, will not be dissuaded and will continue uh, to call for a UN investigation into all civilian deaths. Patrick Harvey. Thank you. I congratulate the Scottish Government on the very clear stance that it has taken on the horrific events of the last few weeks, and I endorse the call for a, an arms embargo as well. The Minister will be aware that there has also been a call for a wider programme of boycotts, divestment and sanctions targeted at the Israeli Government, a call which has been endorsed by global figures, including Desmond Tutu. Some local authorities have acted in Scotland in this respect. Does the Scottish Government support that stance? And does it support the call for such a wider programme of boycott, divestment and sanctions? Minister. Uh, I thank the, the member uh, for his remarks and uh, for his uh, welcome of the initiatives in terms of uh, the Israel-Gaza uh, violence. Uh, the Scottish Government has a policy, it doesn't have a policy of boycott and doesn't advocate uh, a boycott of Israel. Uh, we are not alone in that. Uh, he will be aware that Mahmoud Abbas, the leader of the Palestinian Legislative Authority and the representative of the Palestinian people in the West Bank, also does not call for a boycott. Uh, of Israel. At the same time, this government has made it absolutely clear that we do not dictate to cultural institutions, individuals or organisations what they choose or choose not to do. Um, and uh, we believe that the reason why we have to have engagement is, of course, every time this government engages, be it with the Palestinians or indeed the Israelis, that we put our concerns forward in the strongest possible terms. Jamidi. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, will the Minister join with me in congratulating my 14-year-old constituent, Robert McEwen, who wrote to me about the plight of Palestinian children? With one quarter of the population of Gaza having been displaced during the conflict and the ongoing destruction of homes, schools and hospitals causing widespread devastation, what more can be done to ease the suffering of the Palestinian people? In particular, how will the Scottish Government's uh, commitment of humanitarian assistance uh, help to bring about the long-term reconstruction of civilian infrastructure in Gaza? Minister. I do congratulate his constituent, Robert McEwen. I think uh, I've spoke to many young people and even children who have witnessed uh, the scenes of devastation and destruction in Gaza and been compelled to do something. Uh, I was, uh, saw in my own constituency a, a bake sale being done as I was walking past the street, and all the proceeds were going to, to Gaza, so people have been moved, clearly, of all ages. Uh, in terms of uh, the wider issue, uh, the immediate, uh, of course, humanitarian aid that we've sent, the 500,000 we've sent to, to, to UNRWA flash appeal will go a long way uh, with other government, uh, governments that have uh, put into the pot in terms of uh, immediate assistance, and that's important because that is the priority at the moment. In terms of the longer term, we will continue to work with every single international 
international partner we currently can to put pressure on the Israeli government, to exert pressure on the Israeli government to lift the blockade. The blockade is an open-air prison, uh, is making Gaza an open-air prison. Uh, people are starving, people are dying a slow death in Gaza, and that is completely and utterly uh, to be condemned and completely and utterly unacceptable. Uh, so we will continue to make those calls, we will continue to work with the governments, and whichever government uh, pursues that aim, to ensure that that happens in terms of the wider displacement of people. Uh, we have made the offer very early on when the violence escalated and began to escalate that uh, Scotland is ready to play her part in taking on Palestinian refugees, if that will assist uh, in that matter. But uh, let me give the member the strongest possible commitment that whatever the Scottish Government can do uh, with the powers that it has and in the leadership role that it can play, it will do. Mr Graham. Thank you, Presiding Officer. While I appreciate the comments about UN investigation, there does exist the International Criminal Court. And while I appreciate that referrals can either only be made by the UN Security Council, which will be unlikely because of its membership, or by a member state, given the, the observational uh, state uh, position for Palestine, it would be possible for Palestine to ratify that treaty and to make that application itself to the ICC. Would he encourage that? Minister. You know, this government, uh, very early on to, into my role in government, I wrote to the then Foreign Secretary, William Hague, to support the UN vote on Palestinian enhanced uh, status, uh, the United Nations. That, unfortunately, uh, fell on deaf ears, and uh, the, the UK decided to abstain on that vote. So we do believe that the political route is the best one. In terms of the Palestinians, uh, whether they pursue the ICC, that is a matter, of course, that the Palestinians have to make and what is best for them and their people. Uh, but we have always supported uh, the right of the Palestinians to have a viable democratic state. And the heart of the injustice over the last 60-odd years has been that, of course, while Israel has the right to safety and security, the Palestinians have been denied a viable Palestinian state. And anything that helps them to get to that within the two-state solution, within the 67 borders and Jerusalem is a shared capital, then we will do whatever uh, the Palestinians believe is, is, is viable and the Israelis believe that is viable to get to that <coughs> state. So it is a decision, of course, for the Palestinians to make. And uh, as I say, uh, we support their uh, enhanced status at the, UN, uh, at the United Nations. <coughs> Thank you. Um, that ends topical questions. The next item of business is a statement by Shona Robison on Glasgow 2014.